You know, the Touchdown Club of Atlanta is one of the nation's oldest football clubs. Founded in 1938 for the promotion of high school and college football, the club has stayed true to the same format for seven and a half decades. The club awards high school players of the week each week during the regular season uh, for outstanding performances on the field. And of course, at the end of each season, we select a back of the year and a lineman of the year chosen from the deep pool that is Metro Atlanta High School football. On rare occasions, the back of the year and the lineman of the year will both come from the same team. In fact, the first time this happened was in 1946. The second time it happened was in 1986. And 86, well, a pivotal year, the beginning of a modern dominant program. Much like last week when we talked about Parkview High School, that team that was honored in 1986 was, well, the beginning of another, as I said, modern dominant program, the McEachern Indians. The players selected that year were Kevin Espy, uh, who was the back of the year, and David Summers, who was the lineman of the year. Now, remember, McEachern started playing football way back in the mid-1950s, and by the time head coach Jimmy Dorsey arrived, for his first season in 1984, the program enjoyed only four winning campaigns in those 30 plus years. Coach Dorsey's impact was immediate. In 1983, the previous year to him arriving, uh, for him arriving, they were four and six. In 84, they won three more ball games, finished at seven and three, and narrowly missed the playoffs. In 85, the Indians were nine, two, and one, and made it to the region final, a first for the school. By 86, Coach Dorsey had his team poised to be the first team to win a region championship and enter the high school playoffs. And of course, remembering now that you would uh, win your sub-region and then have to play a playoff game, which was the region playoffs, to move on into the state tournament. I'm sure most of you out there, if you're watching this, you probably you probably already know that. Kevin Epps, uh, Espy was entering his third year as the starting quarterback. And of course, running that uh, that wing T offense, or more precisely for McEachern in those, in those days, the Delaware wing T offense, really quite challenging. But for Espy, in that senior year, uh, by the way, that kid was six foot 180, he really had a dominant, dominant year. In fact, he finished the season with just under 1,200 yards uh, through the air and 22 scores and rushed for an additional 584 yards and hit uh, pay dirt, as Brad says, uh, 13 times. About as good as you can get uh, as a wing T uh, quarterback. That offense that year, by the way, averaged 40 points per ball game and 400 yards of total offense. That year they ran the straight 52 defense and this defense in 86 was incredibly, incredibly dominant. In fact, they were dominant to the tune of allowing just seven points per ball game on average and had eight shutouts in 1986. And, and as we all know, well some of you may know, but to, it, when you're running that 52 defense, you've got to have two stout, stout linebackers. And of course, they did. David Sumners was six foot three, two hundred and twenty pounds. The senior was, and next to him was future All-State and TCA Player of the Year, junior six two two twenty Keith Steed, a name that will, of course, bring back a lot of memories for you Cobb County uh, Cobb County people out there. McEachern would run the table during the regular season in 1986, and in the region finals, they would face Douglas County. It's an old Cobb County guy. We called him D.C. back in the old days. But they faced Douglas County in that region final, a rematch of a Week 5 matchup where McEachern absolutely handled them 48 to nothing. As is so often the case once you get into the playoffs, even against a team you dominated during the regular season, somehow, someway, that team will step up and play you tougher. McEachern did win the ball game and did win that championship, but they only won the ball game 22 to 10. Sadly, the magical season would come to an end in a loss to East Cobb's Walton Raiders. It was a hard-fought game that Walton would put away with a spectacular 88-yard kickoff return early in the fourth quarter. The Indians would see their season end in a 35-28 loss, and the state playoffs would have to wait 
for at least one more year. It was a special season for McTeacher, Kevin Espy, and uh, David Sumners, and the Touchdown Club of Atlanta, as they would honor Kevin again as the back of the year, David as the lineman of the year. This season, of course, would propel McKeachern to the powerhouse that is that they are uh, to this day. Since the arrival of Jimmy Dorsey in 1985, and again, Brad Walsh always puts together our Ever Wonder portion of the program, and Brad tells us that uh, since 84, the Indians have had 15 seasons of winning 10 or more ball games. That sounds absolutely right. And have had only one losing record. The Indians uh, are do doormats no more, Brad says, and home to some of the best sports and campus facilities in the state of Georgia. Kevin Espy attended App State and uh, earned two varsity letters for the Mountaineers. Kevin now lives in Cobb County and works for Cobb EMC. Brad goes on to tell us that David Sumners would go on to Vandy and play for the Commodores. He also lives here in Atlanta and is a mortgage banker. Coming up next, in the What's Next portion of our program, we look ahead to the award season schedule, but more importantly, well, more importantly, we're creeping up on the championship month of May. <laughs> 